I need to read a story. Right, I'm going to read a story that is actually in the Bible, but it's a bit of a crazy story. It's one of the, my favorite stories in the Bible, but it's worth listening to because it's nuts, okay? So, shh, shh, we're in Judges chapter 3. I'm going to read it from verse 12. And you, want to, you just need to listen to what goes on in this story. It's awesome. So again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord because they did this evil. The Lord gave Eglon, the king of Moab, power over Israel. Getting the Amorites and Amalekites to join him, Eglon came and attacked Israel, and he took position of the city of Palms. Israelites were subject to Eglon, king of Moab, for 18 years. They are oppressed by this foreign king. Again, the Israelites cried to the Lord, and he gave them a deliverer called Ehud. He was a left-handed man. Anybody left-handed today? Who's left-handed? Okay, you, you can act this out accurately then if you're left-handed. So Ehud was a left-handed man, the son of Gera, the Benjaminite. The Israelites sent him with tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Ehud had made a double-edged sword about a cubit long. Now a cubit is about from my elbow to my wrist, so... Some of these are looking pretty, pretty close, pretty close. And the double-edged, most of them are double-edged. So, we're, see, we're ahead of the game. We're in the story, right? You've got your sword? Yeah. Some of them are not a cubit, but, you know, there's room for creative imagination here. And listen, he strapped the sword to his right thigh under his clothing. He presented the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab, who was a very fat man. This is really not PC at all, this. But this is the Bible, word for word. So he presents his tribute to Eglon, who was a very fat man. After he had presented the tribute, he, sent on, he was sent on his way. Sorry, he sent on his way those who had carried it. But on reaching the stone images near Gilgag, he himself went back. Gilgal, he himself went back to Eglon and said, Your Majesty, I have a secret message for you. The king said to his attendants, Leave us. And they all left. Ehud then approached him while he was sitting alone in the upper room of his palace and said, I have a message from God for you. And as the king rose from his seat, Ehud reached with his left hand and drew his sword from his right thigh and plunged it into the king's belly. Uh, and it gets more. Uh. So he's plunging this into the king's belly. Even the handle sank in after the blade because he was so fat. And his bowels discharged. This is in the Bible. Anybody who says the Bible's boring isn't reading it. I mean, this is... Even the handle sank in after the blade and his bowels discharged. Ehud could not pull the sword out and the fat closed in over it. Uh. Then Ehud went out to the porch, shut the door of the upper room behind him and locked them. After he had gone, the servants came and found the doors of the upper room locked. They said, oh, he must be going to the toilet in the inner room of the palace. They waited to the point of embarrassment. But when, they did not, but when he did not open the doors of the room, they took a key and unlocked them. And then they saw the Lord had fallen to the floor dead. While they waited, Ehud got away. He passed by the stone images and escaped to Seir. Where he arrived there, he blew a trumpet in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went down with him from the hills with him leading them. Follow me, he said. The Lord has given Moab, your enemy, into your hands. And they followed him down and took possession of the fords of Jordan and led to Moab. They allowed no one to cross over. At that time, they struck down about 10,000 Moabites, all vigorous and strong. No one escaped. That day, Moab was made subject to Israel and the land had peace for 80 years. All because Ehud stuck his sword in the belly of a very fat man. Do you not think that that story is a bit outrageous? Hey, do you not? 
I mean, it's it, it's not light on details, is it? It's it's a bit a bit graphic, really. But I think Ehud was like creative. So he's left-handed. So he straps the sword. So I'm right-handed, but he's left-handed. So he straps the sword inside his right thigh under his clothes so he's not detected and didn't have metal detectors in those days and then when he's alone with the king he whips out his sword and he plunges it right into this fat belly and kills it this guy was courageous and he was a bit outrageous wasn't he is the story is just outrageous so the, the title today is being courageously outrageous or outrageously courageous and one act of outrageous courageous saves a whole nation for 80 years. So the impact and the outflow and the, the consequence of what he did was really amazing. This guy turned the tide for his nation. And I, I like the story because I think it challenges us to step out the box. Whatever box you're in, it challenges you to step out of it. Whatever set of routines, it challenges you to do something different to have a breakthrough. This was not normal humdrum life. This wasn't a safe thing to do, and it wasn't the same thing he'd done yesterday. It was out of routine, out of the box, and out of the normal. And he took courage. And when we read the Old Testament, we need to think that we are, we are not, we're not here to kill actual people, all right? That's not... But we do have an enemy, and we do have a sword, and we have to keep plunging it into the belly of our enemy so that we can go forward and not be oppressed by powers of darkness. And we start to take the kingdom of heaven forward by uh, all means, all outrageous means possible. And it, just the way that this took courage and it took outrageousness, we all need to be courageous and outrageous. And we all need times, regular times, where we don't stay in our box, we don't stay in our routine. If your Christianity is boring, then you're playing it too safe. This was not playing it safe. He, he, this was risky for him. He could have been caught, but he wasn't. He actually turned the tide for his nation. nation. It took courage, it took invention, it took stepping out of the box. Are you a bit bored in your Christianity? Maybe it's time to get your sword out and do something courageously outrageous. Maybe just feeling like a bit stuck, like nothing, uh, you know, this Christian life, and I'm a bit stuck, doesn't seem to be working out for me. Maybe it's time to be a bit outrageously courageous. Break out of the box, break out of the norm, out of the routine, out of the normal, normal out of the boring, and come up with a courageously outrageous thing to do and you're like yeah but what if it's the wrong thing I don't think there is a wrong thing you see see God God is amazing you can't out risk the faithfulness of God you can't out risk the faithfulness of God and you can't make a mess that he can't clean up if you're stepping out with a heart of faith sometimes the answer is just do something rather than standing around waiting for things to change. Just do something. Don't worry if it's the right thing. It just may feel like it's the right thing. Then do it. That's enough. You don't need 10 prophetic words, although sometimes a prophetic word helps. Just do something outrageous and courageous um, because his faithfulness is big enough for that. Right, we're going to have a couple of stories of people who've been doing some outrageous, courageous things, okay? So, Maddie Sharp's with us today. She's going to tell us a quick story. Woo -woo. So, Maddie and John, we sent them to Belgium, to Brussels, quite a few years ago now. And they've been doing amazing things there. And she's got an outrageous, courageous story. <laughs> so, in 2014, um, we got a prophetic word from Julian Adams, who's a friend of Hope Church, um, about moving to Europe. And through 
an, an incredible series of events. I won't go into it, but we ended up in Brussels in 2016. Um, and we've ended up moving um, slightly out of Brussels into a place uh, near La Hulpe, um, which is a, a town. It's like the first French town outside of Brussels where a lot of the people who work in the commission and in the institutions in Brussels um, live. And so we live right near there. Um, and part of the word that Julian had given us, um, first he said, you're going to go to Europe. And at the time, that was the scariest thing for us. Well, that's the bit that we kind of heard first. And we were like, oh, and it was very scary. Um, but we ended up moving and God's, God was so faithful. We were singing that this morning, that he's, fa he's faithful in all of his ways. And he's really gone ahead of us. But part of the other the word was also about reaching people, the decision makers and um, the influencers in Brussels. Um, and we didn't really know what that was going to look like. It sounded great, but we didn't know what it was going to look like. Anyway, fast forward to now, 10 years later, um, God's opened up a door for us to start meeting and planting at the beginning of, sort of a church plant in the village next door to us, which is full of people who make key decisions in Brussels, not only for Belgium, but also for other countries around Europe. So it's amazing. That's amazing. Jan, Jan's got a story. So, uh, as you know, we do um, online healing prayer, which has been going for years, actually. And so, um, the last time we did it at the beginning of June, I felt like God gave me a few different words of knowledge. So, you share them and you're just like, <laughs> you're like, if it's you, like, post in the comments, write something, let me know. And so, someone had, um, I had the word of knowledge for a right shoulder, like the rotator, cuff of a right shoulder and uh, someone responded saying that they'd been having problems with their right shoulder it had been clicking and they had pain on and off due to tendonitis since they'd been paddle boarding many years before and it flares up at times so and we just prayed they're in their home some other city or town in the in the UK and they responded to say the clicking and grinding has gone I haven't been able to rotate my right shoulder backwards without it consistently grinding for years. It is moving smoothly. I have rotated it backwards countless times just now, and it has only mildly clicked once before it would have done it every single rotation. Thank you, Jesus. And so and then we had, there was someone who um, had a problem with their joint, but the one that was, that I kind of was being <laughs> courageous in was I had this word of knowledge, Lola. I was like, so I felt like Holy Spirit be like, share that one now, and so I did, and I thought I I said to everyone on the on the live video, I feel like that's even like a kid's cartoon. I mean, if that means something to you, let me know. And we had someone who, um, basically their 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 um daughter had just bought a cuddly um toy. Uh, the day before and had named it Lola <laughs> and then we had someone else who said the wife of my guitar teacher is called Lola and she just lost her job in strange circumstances and was suffering from depression so I was able to release a prophetic encouragement over that child and also pray for the the wife of this guitar teacher I don't know what's happened to her but it just goes to show like we have no idea the words of knowledge are not for us <laughs> and now you're like really I'm not sure about this and uh, I was so encouraged afterwards when actually God connected the dots and find, found the people so that they could be healed encouraged cheered on so right kids can you think of anybody else in the Bible that maybe did a courageous thing David with Goliath that's a good one isn't it Daniel Daniel David with Goliath that's pretty awesome isn't it and we sat, Teresa and I sat next to people even older than us yesterday at the wedding. And they, we were chatting to, Teresa was chatting to them. And at 65 years old, just on the edge of retiring, God spoke to them both. He was a solicitor. She was a teacher. God spoke to them both to, to move to Calcutta in India and work with, in the red light district. And they went for six years. God spoke to them individually. Isn't that fantastic? There's no retirement in the kingdom. That's outrageously courageous. It's bonkers, isn't it? Isn't that good? <laughs> so, what I would like us to do 
is ask the Holy Spirit, how, what can I do this week or this next couple of weeks that's outrageous and courageous? So it's out of your routine. It's out of your normal box. And it's something for Jesus. It could be to do with telling someone about Jesus, a friend. You could do what Susha did. So, well, I'll pray for you. It could be remembering a prophetic word and thinking, how can I make a step towards that coming? Because I'm bored of waiting. What can I do? It could be to do with finances. It could be anything like that. It could be just the Holy Spirit is going to give you something you haven't been doing that's new, that's courageous, and I want you to write it on your sword with a pen what you're going to do, and then I'm going to t- then you're going to use your sword, all right? So grab a pen, ask Holy Spirit, how can I be out of the box, different, courageous in this next week, 10 days? What are you? And commit to do it with the Holy Spirit. It's going to be different, maybe slightly scary, but you're going to be courageous. Ask Him.